Apple just announced iOS 15 at its worldwide developer conference yesterday, and we're here to tell you all about it, starting with the build number. Just kidding. Nobody cares. Let's talk about FaceTime, though, because people do care about that. And this is one of the main reasons why people choose to stick with iPhone and not go to Android. But Apple says, let's give everyone access to FaceTime, including Android users, which is huge news. Sort of. I mean, what you can do, you can't just download a FaceTime app on your Android or PC now. You can get a link, though. So if you open up FaceTime, tap Create Link, and send it to whoever you want. They can open it up in a web browser on their phone or computer. Right. Is this bad for Apple? I had first thought, okay, are they making a mistake here by, by doing this? I don't think so, because people are going to have a better experience on iPhones than they are on Android, so people with Androids are going to be more likely, I think, to switch. Yes, they're going to say, oh, FaceTime, this is great. I want more of it. I could have used a little more cowbell. I need to switch to Apple products to use it to right. its full, it, full range. Yeah, it won't be totally clunky, and iMessage not coming to Android. Other thing, I heard a bunch of Zoom executives, yep. you know, during the event saying, didn't we invent this already? Because a lot of the new features are very similar to Zoom, except the rectangles yeah. are rounded. Rounded edges, you know, portrait mode is going to blur out your background, so it's just you. Right, uh, which it already exists. You know, they're going to have the blocks on the screen so you can see everyone who's speaking. That's already a, a Zoom, Zoom thing. thing. Yep. Yeah. And Google Meet copied Zoom. But I mean, it's technology industry. Everybody copies each other. It's not like... You know, it's, it's an iterative process. Yep, more imitation yesterday. Google Maps and Apple Maps, they're really, yes. really seeming quite similar. Apple's like, oh, we made this new interactive 3D globe. And I'm like, that's just Google, Google Earth. Google Earth, yes. I got a kick out of the fact that they said that Apple Maps was the best way to navigate your world. Apple Maps is the best way to navigate your world. <laughs> it's easy to use. No chance. We both started laughing as soon yeah, as they said no that. Chance. That's a joke. Yeah. We use Google Maps. I, I do anyway. Yeah. It's typically better, but some of the new imagery in Maps is really cool. Let's show the people. Yeah. So open up Maps here in Spotlight. Help improve Maps, not today. So <laughs> here you go. You can see, I'm seeing things I'm in New York. There's uh, the MetLife building, how about that? That's really cool. And what I love is that you can use two fingers and sort of uh, push, you're supposed to, there you go, Look at push that. up. And you've really got a very cool 3D map of New York City. Here. I think this is going to be really useful yeah. when you're in a city. You're looking for prominent landmarks. You might not be sure what they're called. And you're like, oh, this building on my iPhone looks like that building over there. That means I need to walk in this direction. I think it's pretty cool. Indeed. They've got the augmented reality stuff where you can just tap this, and uh, it'll show you what it looks like. Sort of a Google Street View. A little bit better, I clone. think. Yeah, it looks, well, it looks better, yeah. But, I mean, it's tiny, too, so... Interesting. We'll see how their street view is. Apple is in cahoots with TomTom. Tom. Okay. That's how they get their map data. So they're not alone in this fight to become the best. But they're not winning it either. Focus is a new Apple feature that is a replacement or a substitute, really, for Do Not Disturb. I was thinking about this. And is Apple choosing to call this Focus because they don't want to put it in people's minds that their phone is a disturbance? Potentially, I suppose. Right. I think that my favorite focus feature, actually, they left out. It's called slide to power off. There you go. That'll improve your focus. But really, they're trying to sort of say that, you know, you, you need to have your iPhone all the time. They said that for most people, an iPhone has become indispensable was the word that they used. True. Indispensable. So focus is supposed to help us focus because we need to have it all the time. I don't know. Let's, oh, let's check it out. Open up the settings app here. And I'll open it up too, just to, this is this one is running iOS 14, yep. just to show you what the focus Yeah, so you got like. do not disturb Oops, here above screen time, and right. now it says focus still has the same half moon, crescent moon icon there, and just tap on that. And you've got a whole bunch of options where if you come to do not disturb here, you got none of this stuff, it's all new. Right. All new. Here's a pop quiz, people. Is it a waxing or a waning crescent moon? I know. You don't know how to tell? If you look at your thumbs, if it looks like this side of the thumb, it's waxing. And if it looks like this side of the thumb, it's waning. So it's a waning crescent. Okay. How about that? That's a about good that? tidbit there. I got that from an earth science teacher. So to be fair, although focus is a better term, before they had do not disturb while driving, but they were running into a situation where they were gonna have to do do not disturb while sleeping, while working, while everything else. So that's kind of clunky. So instead we have focus, and driving is not in David's menu, but it can easily be added. How yep. do we do that? Just tap that plus button, tap on driving. 
Your iPhone can detect when you may be driving to automatically silence incoming alerts and notifications. We know how to do that. I want to turn that on. That's a great feature. That's a great feature. All right, tap back to focus. I just did that. Then you've got personal, sleep, work, and you can set up custom events like reading or gaming or the suggested ones, fitness, gaming, reading. Name your focus. But what I really think this excels at is, for instance, if we just look at Do Not Disturb, we can add specific people and specific apps that we want to allow through this focus block. So apps, any app. Any app you want. Super helpful for work though. If you have like a work focus, then you could allow your work apps yep. through that. Or Slack, your work- email. Yep, your work colleagues through that. You could also um, say, I don't wanna see certain home screens on my iPhone. I only wanna see my work home screen and not my games home screens because a lot of people get distracted as they're swiping back and forth to try to find an app. I feel like the app library was kind of designed to reduce that clutter and now they've got another clutter reducer. Do you of, use the app library? I Yeah. yeah. I got rid of like everything and just tossed it all in the app library. All in the app library, yep. No, I'm still halfway in. Eh. Weather also got a bit of a facelift and a bunch of cool new features. If I go back to the home screen, and we were just talking about the app library. I sent the weather app to the app library and I've got this awesome widget at the top. So as you can see, different animations. Everything's a nice little, those rounded rectangles. There you go. Oh. You start scrolling down. Oh, I opened the map. Start scrolling down. So you have the precipitation here. Just tap on that. And you can kind of see what's going on. It's a little slow. I got nothing. You got no map. So you can kind of see the precipitation that's coming your way and it looks kind of stormy today. I'll tap done here. 10 day forecast. We have that. It looks like, I think it looks better on this. Yeah. It has the range of temperatures too, which I really like. Yeah, you can't expand it though. I wish that you could do that. Not yet. Not this yet. Is, this is just iOS 15 beta one. I mean, this kind of has the range of temperatures too. It has the highs and lows. I guess it does, doesn't it? Yeah. It looks better on this one. Well, it does. And it makes sense that they would put the low on the left and the high on the right. Where in this one, they have the high on the left and the low on the right. Yeah. That makes sense. Leftovers, they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Two left feet, left-handed compliment. You ever see a crook named Righty? Air quality, that's still there, but start coming down here and you got these, it's more interactive, more information being They're displayed. not interactive, but there is more information. Oh, I think it looks, a, looks better. It looks interactive. Another native app with some cool new features is Wallet. The thing that I was really looking forward to is adding your ID card mm -hmm. to Wallet, which I long overdue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, well, some people are gonna be a little afraid of this. I think so. But some people are afraid of everything. So the ID card, like your state driver's license, Apple during their events said, we're gonna be working with certain states. Didn't specify which states, yeah. but. Yeah, well, that's all right. And uh, you'll be able to add your driver's license to your iPhone. This will be very confusing for many people, mm -hmm. but it's an interesting idea because they say that they wanna make your iPhone a real wallet replacement. And for that to be the case, you also have to be able to get into your house. Wait a minute, that's usually a keys thing. Yep. But they wanna build that into wallet too. Yeah, I was actually reading a comment we got and somebody was saying, you know, people who have these, you know, keyless apartments are more like developers or large apartment complex companies who or are just- rich people. Rich people. So it's really, <laughs> it's really not gonna be uh, good for the average consumer. I think it sounds cool, but a lot of the smart home stuff too, and they spend a lot of time talking about smart home is it's, you know, it's a little bit too expensive right now. And a lot of people don't, own homes and the housing market right now is is well somebody at yeah. this table owns a home david Not, just got a new home yeah. yes got and he's very, getting a new got very fortunate he's getting new yeah. and married too in like a month everything's changing yeah, for everything's, david everything's coming together notifications also is going to look much different in ios 15 kind of similar with the focus theme reducing the clutter in the notification center on your iphone so yep. i swipe down from the upper left hand corner of the screen thinner notifications if you have like a message or a phone call, you'll see the contacts picture. Yep, in. you can see here that there's a stack for Zoe and there's a stack for Colin, yep. so you can actually see more. There's yes. just this endless list. If you have Clubhouse, remember Clubhouse? Oh we gosh. used to get hundreds of notifications every second, so now at least they'll be all in one little list that then you can expand. Yep, improved Siri as well. It's gonna Same be time. smarter. Smarter Siri, well, it always gets smarter. It can't, can't get any dumber. That's true. That's for sure. It's hard to do worse than it is. No, come on, David. Yeah. This is Apple, we're Apple guys. So Siri now has on-device voice recognition, right? Is that what they call it? Yes. Okay, so that's gonna make it a lot faster because now the audio doesn't have to get sent to Apple where they can analyze it without your permission. Oops, we got caught and turned that off. Where they can analyze the audio. So now it's just sending the text of what you're saying to Apple, which makes everything a lot faster if it's if it's getting a, you know, something from the internet that it doesn't know the answer to. And they built in a lot of stuff to the phone so that you can do things like set timers. 
without connecting to the internet at all. So it's pretty instant. Yes, on-device speech recognition. Excuse me. I was wrong. Oh, We're I was both wrong, wrong, too. Yeah, okay, thanks. Audio never leaves your device. Be faster, as you said. No internet connection needed for some queries. Another awesome new feature that Apple added in the Photos app is OCR, which is optical character recognition, but they're not gonna call it that. It's been around for a while, but it allows you to scan documents or do a lot more than that, to take photos and then copy and paste text out of them or interact with the text in the photos themselves. It's pretty amazing how well it works. Let's demo it for our wonderful viewers. I'll take this four pack of AirTags. You can win one of these, become a Pay It Forward channel YouTube member. Yep. Said all the words are right, maybe not the right order. Open up the camera app here and hover over the image. You'll see those yellow brackets appear around the text. And at the same time, this little pages button will appear. Tap on that. Okay, so now it's isolated the text. And what if we want to open that link right here? Tap on that. How about that? That's pretty amazing. Ultra wideband availability. So instead of having to get in here and like type in this tiny text, you could just take a picture of it, even if it's tiny and go right to the web page. Here is where this is gonna be so useful. You get a new Wi-Fi router and the password is written on the back of the router in really small text. That's brilliant. Take the take picture, the copy picture, the password, look at the phone. paste it into the phone instead of writing it down. Oh my gosh. Yep, and it works for the photos you've already taken as well. Yes. So if you've done that, which I have in certain, so yeah. yeah, it's good. Good. Yeah, that yeah. would have been really useful. This would have been really useful for me to have like four years ago. Yeah. Well, fortunately, there are a whole new generation of Davids yes. that need help with their passwords. That is iOS 15. Leave a comment down below. We didn't touch on every single thing That's that was sure. announced. Yeah. Leave we, a comment. We can do a follow-up video too and yeah. answer some of your questions can, about it. Yeah. One thing I will close with is that battery life, you know, Betas, this, my phone has gone down like 15% in 30 minutes. It's uh That's just the way rough. it is with the it's betas. The, especially the first ones are always a little bit rough, but compared to iOS 14 beta, the first one, I think this is better. Yep. The beta, last time around, it was tough. Yep. The phone, the phone app was crashing all the time for me. Please subscribe to our Please YouTube subscribe. channel. Yep, join yep. it if you feel like it. Yes. Really like us. David's getting married. Leave a comment Yay. down below. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We're gonna do more of these iOS preview videos since we have the developer beta. We can get it first and show you all the cool <laughs> new stuff. We can get first. Thanks for watching.